Okay, 9.7. Uh, laws of cosines and laws of sines and a new thing called area of a triangle. Okay, so first of all, the area of a triangle that you've learned about oops, is uh, one half base times height. Well, that's only if you know the height of a triangle or the altitude. Remember, an altitude gives you the height of a triangle. Well, on these triangles, we aren't going to be able to know what those are, what the height or the altitudes are. So there's got to be another way to do it, and these formulas tell you that. Now, all these formulas are the same type of thing. Uh, so you really only need to remember one, but again, I'm just going to write one up on the board. <clears throat> so we'll just take a look at, at uh, uh, the first one here. For, if you're given an angle A, and it doesn't have to be A, it could be B or C, okay? The formula is one half of the two sides that are around the angle given. So the angle is made by the two sides given. Okay, so if you look up here at angle A, B and C are the sides that make up angle A, right? Okay, so what you have is, is those three pieces, uh, A, C, and B. All right, those three pieces make up your formula. One half of the two sides and then the sine of that angle. All right, so we'll do a, we'll do a problem here in a minute and then we'll uh, um, come back to oops, uh, doing the area. All right, let's go to the next slide, talk about law of sines. So we also in this chapter talked about proportions, setting up proportions. Right? With the triangles, we drew three triangles and then we tried to find a proportion to set up and cross multiplied. Well, that's what this is here. So I, I'm just going to look, look at uh, the first two here for a proportion. If I know an angle and the sides and maybe another angle, I can set up a proportion and solve. So look at the triangle up to the right. The sine of A is to little a as the sine of B is to little b. That's what that uh, block is that I uh, uh, made there with the sine of A and B and the sine of B and B. And again, we'll do some um, examples here in a minute. It'll make a little more sense. But one of the four things is always missing, right? There's always something that's missing and you got to solve for it. That's using your algebra. Okay. Um, the This on the left is how we always set it up. You can set it up this way if you want with the, with the uh, side lengths on top if you want. But Look at the law of cosines down here. Again, these will be up on the board. I'll write them up on the board for the test. What I want you to note here is this letter at the beginning is the same letter at the end with whatever you're using. If I'm using side B, then I use angle B, the, the angle opposite. If I use side C, then I use angle C. Okay? And then notice... Um, the letters inside here. Those are the other letters that aren't included at the beginning and at the end. Just something to notice. Again, I'll have this all set up for you on the, on the board. You won't need to memorize it, okay? And I'll write these out as we uh, start doing the, the uh, practice here. All right, so let's go ahead and do the practice. Extra practice. <clears throat> So at this point, they're just wanting to know what these values are. So everybody take your calculator. It says find the trigonometric ratio. Okay. <clears throat> what I want you to do is just put the sine of 225 in. And you get, everybody should do it. Let's see if you get it. Negative point seven zero seven one it says four decimal places so make sure you go out four decimal places if it says four go out four sorry it's hard to see that make it black so negative point seven zero seven one everybody do the next two real quickly Make sure you round it correctly.
No, did you round it correctly? So the answer is up on the board. Make sure you check it. Again, we're just making sure you can use your calculator correctly, whether you're finding the angles or whether you're finding uh, the trigonometric ratio. Okay? All right, now let's move down and let's actually do the formula for the area of a triangle. So let me write the formula out. I'll write it in the middle here. It is one half each side, I'm going to just say side one, side two, times the sine of the angle. That way you don't have to say which side is it, A or B or C, okay? So it's the two sides that make up your angle. In this case, we're dealing with this information right here. There isn't anything else given, but it's okay if it is. So here it is. I'll do this one with you. One half. Both the sides multiplied together, 9 times 14, times the sine of 79. In this case, you can just put this straight in your calculator. So everybody do this with me. 0. 0.5 is 1 half. So put 0. 0.5 times 9 times 14 times sine of 79. And it says round to the nearest tenth, so 61.8 square units. Remember, area is square units. 61.8. Anybody not get that? Okay, now I want you to do number five. And then I'll write, I'm just going to write the answer up here. You check to see if you got it right. We get it right? Anybody not get that? If you, anybody? Everybody got it right? It's pretty simple, isn't it? Okay, so that's easy. Let's go on to using law of sines and law of cosines. So how do you know which one to use? You always start out trying to see if you can use the law of sines. So here's how I do this. I look at um, the angle that I've been given, and I look at the opposite side. If I've not been given that, that's okay. I'm gonna set up all the law of sines here. You start with your angles. So I can say the sine of 50 is to the opposite side, that's gonna be little a. And I have another angle here, the sine of 30 is to the opposite side, 22. And I look at that and I say, do I have at least three of the pieces? Do you? Yeah, you have three out of the four pieces. If you don't, then you can go ahead and do the C part. Now, I also want to point out this. You do know angle C. How do I know angle C? Because it's a triangle and you have the other two sides. How many degrees are in a triangle? 180. So you could find angle C, and you're going to have to, because look up at the instructions. It says solve. Solve the triangle. Okay? So that means you got to know all the angles and all the sides. So if I take 180 on my calculator minus those two angles, 50 and 30, I get 100 for angle C. So that this part is what makes this section difficult. You have to find all the pieces. And you're not sure if you're going to use the law of sines or law of cosines. You just kind of have to start and see what's missing. Okay, so now let's do this calculation for little a. Now everybody do this with me. a times the sine of 30 is equal to 22 times the sine of 50. Always put the sine last in your calculation. It's hard to see that. I'll move this up. We'll, put, we'll do the work here on the white part. Okay, so I don't know that A times sine of 30 is, but I can take 22 times the sine of 50 on my calculator. Okay. 
Okay, so I said 16.85 dot, dot, dot. I'm leaving that on my calculator because I'm going to want you to do something here. How do I get A by itself? What do I do with the sine of 30? How is it attached to the A? It's attached by multiplication, right? So we're going to divide by it. So this is the algebra, guys. So the sine of 30 cancels out. I'm left with A equals whatever that is. So on your calculator, you should have the answer. Everybody look over here. I know you're trying to catch up. You should have the answer on your screen for whatever uh, 22 times the sine of 50 is. Okay? Now just hit the divide sign, and it, it puts that answer that you had up there on your screen. It should. And hit divided by sine of 30. Hit sine of 30. That way you don't have to worry about rounding that answer. You're just using the answer from the previous calculation. Okay? And you should get, everybody make sure you can get this right, 33.7. Now, who did not get that? So I can come around and see how you're doing your, using your calculator. Okay, let me see. We found little a. We need little c. Okay, so now we need to do another law of signs problem to find little c. So let's do this. <clears throat> I'm going to write it under number 7 here. So I'm going to take and do sine of 100 to, to c. I'm going to write this in yellow on the paper. You can see it a little bit better, can't you? Sure. Sine of 100 is to c as... And then you can pick either of those other two because you have it. I can do um, the sine of 30 is to 22 if I wanted, which is what I used the last time. Now you cross multiply. I want you guys to try to do this one on your own, okay? Try not to look up the screen. I'm going to write it down for you, but you try to do it on your own, okay? Sixteen times the sine of eighty-two. I'll hit enter because that's a group on the top of the the fraction, and then I'm hit divided by twenty-five, and I get a long number here. I get 0 0.633, and I'm just going to put dot 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 equals the sine of b. And again, how do I get b by itself? I got to move the sine over by taking the arc sine of that answer. So I hit second sine, and hit my answer key, and I get b equals 39 degrees. So that's just another look at uh, using law of signs, but you're not given enough degrees. If you look at 8, I'm going to go ahead and erase this part here. If I look at uh, number 8, <clears throat> there are no degrees at all. Sometimes I'll use the law of signs or law of cosines even though I have the degrees. It's a preference really, and you can use either one. Um, so let's go ahead and set up the law of, uh, law of cosines here. Um, pick an angle that you want. Which one? It doesn't matter. B. We'll, we'll find angle B here. So that means the formula I'm going to use is going to be the B formula. If you look back at your formulas, it either starts with A squared, B squared, or C squared. So if I'm finding angle B... I need to start with little b. b squared equals the other two sides, a squared plus b squared, minus 2ab times the cosine of b. Notice the first and last letters match. Okay? So once you identify which formula you want to use with the letters in the right positions, now we just substitute everything. Okay? So I'm going to put little b in for b squared. That's going to be, oops, 7 squared 
Little a is 5. Little c is 3. Minus 2 times little a times little c times the cosine of angle B, which we don't know. Remember, if you don't know an angle, you're going to have to eventually use the inverses of them, the arc, arc cosine. Now, be very careful. I tell my uh, trig students this all the time. This is where students make mistakes. Do every little calculation by itself and rewrite the problem. Okay? So you don't make a mistake. So 7 squared is 49. 5 squared is 25. 3 squared is 9. And I'm going to do this right here. 2 times 5 is 10 times 3 is 30 times the cosine of B. Notice I did every calculation by itself. I'm not putting this in the calculator yet. If you have to use a calculator for each, if you didn't know what 7 squared was, use a calculator for that. That's fine. But don't do the whole problem on your calculator because you're going to make an error. Now the next thing I look at is I can put these two together. So 49 equals 25 plus 9 is 34. I still have the minus 30 cosine of B. I can't take 34 minus 30 because the 30 is attached to the cosine by multiplication, isn't it? Okay, so that means I have to do the cosine times 30 first, except I don't know the cosine of B, right? All right, so let me rewrite this in an algebra uh, equation, and let me ask you what I should do. Let's say I had four, uh, 49 equals 34 minus 3x. How would you solve that algebra problem? I would move the 34 to the left, right? Yeah, Emily's right. And then what would you do? Negative 3, and that's what students kind of make a mistake on. They drop that negative once they move the 34. It's a minus sign, but it becomes a negative on the 3. It doesn't disappear, is my point. All right, so let's go back and do this. <clears throat> so I'm going to move the 34 to the left by subtracting it, and I get 15. And I'm left with a negative 30 cosine of B. And you guys said you would divide that. So we're going to divide by the negative 30. And I get negative 0.5. Whatever your calculator would tell you. A lot of times you're going to get a long decimal, okay? Now, again, how do I get B by itself? Got to move the cosine across the equal sign, right? So I'm going to take the arc cosine of negative 0.5 <clears throat> so everybody do that second cosine negative 0.5 everybody get 120 most of the time they're not going to be like this in our trig class everything is decimals and you know weird fractions and stuff but this is John it's your first time doing this Okay, um, that's law of cosines and law of sines, okay?